10, 20 years ago. You would be surprised at what they wanted to do. Is Electronic, whatever, it's a cigarette. That are in the later stage. Okay. So next up, we have Brenda Howard. She's with the Arkansas Department of Health, Tobacco Prevention and Cessation Program. She's the Section Chief for Cessation um, Services. And her presentation will bring to light the understanding of tobacco use and prevention among mental health individuals and individuals associated with substance abuse. Brenda? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Um, thank you, Ms. Conley, for the opportunity to come and present today. Um, it's an honor to be able to present in this arena because once I was doing some research with um, preparing for this PowerPoint, there is a lot of uh, correlation between the substance abuse, mental health, and the prevalence in uh, individuals with HIV. So am I going to have to do this too? Because I can stand over here and do it. Okay, okay. As Debbie said, I'm the cessation section chief for uh, Arkansas Department of Health Tobacco Prevention and Cessation Program. And some of the objectives that I'm going to cover today are um, tobacco use in Arkansas, and I'm just going to do a highlight of our tobacco prevalence. And then I'm going to talk about some um, tobacco use among the HIV population and talk about some uh, programs that we have to address individuals with mental health and substance abuse and some of the programs and efforts that have gone into us uh, developing programs to address these populations because they've just recently released information to begin to identify people with mental health and substance abuse as being a disparate population because there's such a high prevalence of tobacco use among them. And I'm going to talk about some highlights from, the, from that pilot project that we had. And then I'm going to share some information about the Arkansas Tobacco Quit Line. And these are just some tobacco prevalence. And last year with the uh, BARFAS data, they changed the methodology and so in 2012. And so you see there's kind of a jump in the tobacco use for our state. But we're st steadily trying to make efforts to decrease that number. You can go to the next slide. Um, when we started in May of 2012, we began because initially we were not even accent on our screen and when people call the quit line, the number, of the number of tobacco users that called that had mental health and substance abuse issues. So we started asking those questions in May of 2012 and this is data that was collected from May of 2012, um, well it's actually June to June 30th of 2013 and there were about 52% of the registrants that indicated that they had at least one of the mental health disorders. And then there was about 34% of them who reported uh, depression, 33% with anxiety, 4% um, uh, of schizophrenia, 13% of bipolar disorders, and eight reported drug and alcohol use. And what we do know in the data is that usually among the mental health uh, with schizophrenia, it's much, much higher. So that means that we need to do more work about getting people within the mental health to uh, call the quit line. And what we've done with the strategies in our ga um, ground games at TPCP, we've tremendously increased the number of providers that our healthcare, re re healthcare provider referred to the quit line. There was about a 25% of the calls that came in came from healthcare providers, which made about 8,751 of the total calls that were from referrals from healthcare providers. So we're, we're getting there. Um, well, among mental health and substance abuse, they use tobacco products at a very high prevalence. And this is very similar to those uh, results for those that have HIV. There is about a 44 to 46% consumption of cigarette use among this population. And as we know, 443,000 deaths a year occur related to tobacco-related issues. And of those, 200,000 people have mental health and, and substance abuse issues. 
these are just some numbers, national uh, statistics, and you, this kind of helps you to, um, okay, these are, these are a repeat of that uh, information I shared with you a little bit earlier, so you can go on to the next one. These are some of the barriers that come up when people, when we, when we started out the projects trying to address tobacco use among this population. And, you know, the thing is, is that people say that people with mental health and substance abuse, you know, they, they can't quit, you know, and that was not the case. That was absolutely not the case. They just have to have more strategies and follow up when you're addressing them. And it, some thought that it would jeopardize their uh, recovery and cause them relapse. But the, con the converse is true. When people address tobacco use and their um, mental health or substance abuse disorders, especially in substance abuse, there's a 25% decrease in their uh, substance use abstinence. So it's a benefit for them to, to address their tobacco use. And then one of the other things was tobacco use with staff. And we know that in some of these uh, facilities, there is a high use of tobacco among the staff. And so what we did is we tried to address that in our programs that we, we had working with them. Excuse me, y'all, I feel like that politician, but I need a drink of water. <laughs> Not calling names. But um, we had to um, develop different things to address um, this population. And these were some of the goals when we set up the uh, uh, program to address tobacco use among DBHS. And we've had wonderful partners with them because they have been very forward thinking in what they've implemented to address tobacco use among this pop population. And we had to uh, get providers to adopt policies to address tobacco use. And the thing is, is that my background is in mental health and substance abuse. And I can remember for years and years and years doing assessments and asking about tobacco. And once they responded, I wrote what they put there, but there was rarely any follow up, you know, and I guess I'm getting punished now. I don't know. But uh, I'm having an opportunity to try to make up for some of those uh, lack of information in those years previous years. But then the other thing we wanted them to do is to document in the instances where they were not documenting. And we wanted them to provide tobacco treatment because if you think about it, it's an ideal op uh, opportunity because people in mental health and substance abuse are already providing treatment. They already have the skill sets. And so tobacco use and treating tobacco use needs to be integrated along those lines with the mental health and the substance abuse because we know the benefits of it. And um, we wanted them to monitor their progress and make referrals to the Arkansas Tobacco Quit Line because we know that the more resources that you have available for individuals that are trying to quit, the better the outcomes of their and their quit success. Uh, so we wanted them to receive training. A lot of these programs were built on uh, programs that started right after I, I began at Arkansas Department of Health in 2011. They had specific programs going on where they're addressing tobacco use in that population. And so what we tried to do is we tried to build each time on the information or the problems or the issues that we saw. And we uh, implemented that provider program, a pilot project, and we were able to serve over 914 mental health and substance abuse uh, consumers within a three-month period. And we, you can see from the data here, we had really good outcomes. And if you look at the, not, um, the line at the very bottom, this is what I'm really, really import, uh, 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 glad to see. It says the number of staff who set a quit date, there were four staff that were in those facilities working. And when they started addressing the tobacco use with the consumers, said, you know, I, I can't do this. You know, I'm using tobacco and this is something that I know I need to stop doing. So, you know, I'm gonna go through the struggles with them. And so they decided to set a quit date, but we are very proud of the progress and we've, we've been very proud of our providers in the mental health and substance abuse because they've been really receptive. And what I'm finding nationally, uh, that's not really the case in a lot of other states. So Arkansas is really doing a great job in getting that right. Okay. And here, let's see. 
these are just some of the programs that we've started um, and in order to kind of make the foundation right for addressing this. Um, you know, the Arkansas Tobacco Quit Line, I'll talk a little bit more about it in a minute. But we also have the Systems Training and Outreach Program, which is a program that we have outreach specialists um, that are located in each of the local health regions. And what they do is they go face to face with health care providers, mental health providers, substance abuse providers to share information on how to access the Quit Line. You would be surprised that. Now, you know, this has been up and going, what, since 2001 is when the master settlement funds, and then in 2002 they begin the programs. There are a lot of people that have never heard of the Arkansas Tobacco Quit Line that are healthcare providers, and that still occurs in their day-to-day -day work. And so they are there to work with them and share how to integrate uh, addressing tobacco with each patient, what they try to get them to do is adopt the two A's and R, which is ask, advise, and refer to the quit line. And uh, we had, again, uh, memorandums of understanding with Department of Behavioral Health Services, uh, Community Mental Health Services, and other providers that have been really remarkable in in integrating tobacco treatment in their programs. We provided the tobacco treatment and we did this in several different venues. We provided certified tobacco treatment specialist training. We provided, uh, partnered with other uh, existing training organizations within, Ar within Arkansas to implement uh, tobacco treatment training for the providers working in the program. And some of those partnerships are listed here as well as De Department of Community Corrections, and I need to correct that because now it's Arkansas Community Corrections, ACC. And so another thing that we've done is we uh, began to, uh, we have an electronic referral uh, to get people to the quit line, enrolled in services through the quit line. So all these other resources are available. You can go to the next slide. And this is uh, the information on the Arkansas Tobacco Quit Line. You can go. The benefits, they're confidential, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, motivational interviewing is what uh, the counselors are trained on. They have 24 hours of uh, service, so 24-7 they are able to access services. Um, there are special protocols for pregnant women, postpartum, and um, smokers, and adolescents. But adolescents are eligible to receive NRT benefits. You can... And currently in the, under the quit line, we offer the patch, the lozenge, and the gum. And if the person has tried all of those services and has been unsuccessful, then they can get a $50 off voucher for Varenicline. And here is who is covered under the quit line. The adults, uh, 18 and above, they can receive two weeks supply. They can receive five outbound calls and... Um, they can, you know, as the NRTs that I just discussed a minute ago, pregnant women, pregnant women get 10 calls, outbound calls. But the thing is, is when they enroll for services, they can get as many, they can call the quit line as often as they want. But these are the program um, calls that will be initiated by the quit coach. And youth 13 to 17 can receive those five calls, but they cannot receive NRT. Now with the pregnant women, they can receive nicotine replacement therapy, but they have to get a voucher from their physician first. And you can go. These are other resources. And uh, um, these are our stamp out smoking, our outreach specialists, which I talked about. But we also have a website at arstop.org. And you can go there and get additional training and resources on how to implement or integrate tobacco treatment into their programs. I'm running out of time. Oh, no. Okay. Keep going. Let's see. Okay, just keep going until I figure. This is our link. That's our electronic referral. And this is the provider impact. National Cancer Institute. If we if the healthcare providers assisted 10% of their tobacco using patients, they could drop the tobacco users by two million people annually. That's just 10%. What if they did 100 percent Okay. Any questions? Yes, ma'am.
little to no charge. <coughs> These are the um, the quit line. Mm -hmm. And one of them was the fifty dollar voucher. Mm -hmm. Now is that fifty dollar voucher fifty dollars off of the cost? Or off of the cost. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What is the cost of that? It varies between one hundred and ten and one hundred and forty dollars. And the thing that I've um, um, when I was doing this research on this, tobacco users, um, tobacco use is two to three times higher than that of the average population for people that have HIV. There's about a 50 to 70 percent uh, tobacco prevalence among that population, which is very similar to what it is in the mental health and substance abuse. And there's a high prevalence of mental health and substance abuse issues, as well as there are um, effects for them not addressing their tobacco use. They have high incidences of mortality because of being a tobacco user, about 53%. So I wanted to share that information as well. Any other questions? No? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh -huh.